Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 74 and in this episode I'm going to show you more than 30 new features in Google Apps so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with Google Chrome as it got plenty of new changes. The first one is the ability to read specific parts of a web page instead of using Google Assistant read it feature that reads the whole thing. So for example if I want to only read this paragraph I can simply highlight it like this and then tap on the ellipses and here I have read aloud. When I tap on it, Samsung recently unveiled the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and Fold 5 as incremental upgrades to its last generation models. You will see here I'm getting a floating card at the bottom of the screen and it highlights the text as it reads. Plus I have a gear icon over here that will allow me to adjust the speed up to 10 uh, selections over here and also I have the ability to adjust the text size and I have five options to choose from and here's the default one and once you're done with the reading you can simply tap on the X to close the player. Change number two is the ability to name your tab groups. So for example here I have two separate tabs and when I group them together by dragging them over each other and then tap on the group you will notice here I'm getting a text field at the top that will allow me to give it a name. So I'm going to give it the name test and you will notice here that now my group has a name plus two of the glyph icons from the websites included in this group plus if you are navigating this group for example like this you have the ability to also edit the name from the floating card by tapping on the arrow at the bottom left corner and then tap on the text field. Change number three is the ability to lock your incognito tabs. So for example when you go to settings and then scroll down then go to privacy and security you will see here a toggle called lock incognito tabs when you leave Chrome. And when you turn on the switch it will ask you for a biometric authentication and then when you open a new incognito tab let's navigate to any website as an example like google.com go to the website and when you leave chrome and then open it again it will ask you to unlock to be able to view the uh, tabs like this and it will reload one more time Change number four is the new journeys feature under history. So let me show you how it works. Now when you go to your Google Chrome history, you will notice here that I have two tabs at the top. One is called list and one is called journeys. You will notice here that I visited some websites related to the pixel fold. And now when I go to journeys, it will group all of them together under one topic called pixel fold. When I go to this group, I will see all the web pages related to this topic. I can delete any of them from my history using the X over here, or I can also multi-select to delete all of them together or open all of them in a new tab group. You have also the ability to open any specific web page in a new tab or new incognito tab. You can also collapse or expand if you want. So that will make it easier for you to get back to your history. But keep in mind that this feature only works when you visit web pages from Google search. So for example, after visiting this web page, now when I go to history and then journeys and then pixel fold, now I have four web pages instead of only three like before. So don't expect this feature to group all your browsing history under journeys, but instead when you do a search query and visit multiple pages, it will group those pages together under the same topic. Change number five. When you visit any web page and then tap on the address bar, you will get a new section here called related to this page in addition to the normal section which is called recent searches. And this one will help you dig deeper in a specific topic without the need to type the search query manually. Number six is the new privacy ad feature. Now when you go to Chrome settings and then go to privacy and security, you will see a new menu here called ad privacy. But previously this menu was called privacy sandbox as shown here on my pixel 7 pro and this new menu will give you more flexibility to personalize your ads so for example if you want to see ads about the topics you searched for you can turn on the switch and this history will be automatically deleted every four weeks you can also check the topics that you blocked manually in this page you can do the same here for the site suggested ads based on your activity on a specific website and the data gets deleted every 30 days plus you can check the blocked websites over here and finally you have something called ad measurement and this one will measure your behavior and start personalizing the ads based on your activities and behaviors and you can also choose to turn off this feature if you want 
and this is how it works now change number seven is the privacy and security page under chrome settings is now better organized now you will see two categories one is called privacy and one is called security and instead of having all the options listed on top of each other like before change number eight is the better support for dynamic colors under the different menus and pages so for example under settings this is the current uh, color palette i'm using and when i go to the wallpaper and the style app change it to something else and then go back to chrome you'll notice here that the colors are now different change number nine when you tap on the lock in the address bar you will see a new option here called about this page tapping on it will open a floating card with more information about the website and some related searches you can open this web page in a separate tab if you want or you can dismiss it with the x now let me show you a couple more changes in the desktop version before moving to the next app the first change is the new download tray so for example when you download any file instead of getting a bar at the bottom of the screen to show you the progress of your download now you will see a download button at the top right corner clicking on it will show you the new download tray from here you can hover your mouse over the download and choose to pause resume or cancel plus when you click on it it will automatically open the file after the download finishes and at the bottom you have a quick shortcut to show all the downloads you have the second change is the new customization options for example when you open a blank page in google chrome and then click the edit button at the bottom right corner you will get a side menu with plenty of options the first thing you can do here is to change your chrome theme the first option is called the classic chrome which will give you the same old classic look of google chrome or you can upload your own image and use it as a wallpaper the next option is called the chrome colors and here it will give you some dual colors to choose from or you can pick whatever color you want by clicking on the eyedropper button and here you can put the rgb values you can use the eyedropper to pick a color from whatever you see on the screen and so on then you will get multiple wallpaper categories to choose from and when you open any of these categories you will get a toggle at the top called refresh daily which will automatically change your wallpaper from within this category every day and once you choose the theme you want you can also change the accent color if you don't like the default one applied by google chrome then there is a button that will allow you to revert back to classic chrome at any time and lastly a section to modify the shortcuts and here you can turn the feature on or off or choose between the most visited websites or your own shortcuts and now it's time for today's sponsor if you are interested to purchase original windows 10 and office keys head over to cdkeyoffer.com using the links in the description below then apply my special promo code id20 to get extra 25 percent discount windows 10 oem key will cost you 16.23 dollars which is very affordable to complete your purchase choose your preferred payment method input the details and once the payment is done you will be redirected to the orders screen to view your code click on the view keys slash codes button then click on get the key to activate your windows 10 oem key copy the code from the website head over to your windows settings then system scroll all the way down and click on about then product key and the activation and finally click on a change paste the code in the text field and click on next then activate and now your original windows key got activated for more offers please check the links in the description below and now let's get back to the review now let's talk about google photos and the first change is in the widgets preview now they have a totally different look in the widgets picker but they work exactly the same the second change is under the search tab sometimes when you open any of these categories you will get a bubble at the bottom of the screen saying can't find your photo or video when you tap on this bubble it will give you some hints about how to locate your photos like check the device folders and when you tap on it it will show you all your device folders or it asks you to check your deleted items and finally to turn on the backup on other devices in case your photos are located on a different device and you are not aware of this change number three is the new lens icon now it got redesigned to match google lens new icon talking about google lens it also got some tweaks the first one is the light theme support and when you expand the viewfinder you will see a redesigned text with a bigger font to give you a hint about each mode and when you search for something in photos and then swipe up to add to your search you will see a redesigned search bar at the top and it now uses a rectangular thumbnail instead of the circular one like before and you can use this feature to add extra modifications to whatever you are searching for in this photo now let's talk about gboard 
And the first change is the permanent language switcher at the bottom right corner that looks exactly like One UI. And when you tap on it, it will show you all the languages you have set up so you can switch between them. But I found the normal language switcher to be easier because it doesn't bring this floating menu first, which is a bit annoying if you got used to the normal way. The second change is the new resizing tool. When you tap on the toolbox, you will find a new option here called resize. Tapping on it, it will give you much more flexibility to resize and the position your Gboard. So for example, if you want to make it smaller, you can drag any of those handles like this. And this is the highest size you can get. Or you can also place it wherever you want. So for example, I can make it this high and have this empty space at the bottom. So I, if I prefer my keyboard to be a little bit higher, I can achieve this with the new resizing tool. And also I have the ability to revert back to the default settings by tapping on this button and then tap on the tick sign. And lastly, the navigation bar at the bottom now animates when you select different options. So here what happens when I tap on the stickers, the GIF, the emoticons, and also the emojis. Now let's move on to Google Messages. And lately I started to see a lot of animated stickers in the suggestions. And here is one of the examples. This is how it looks. So I got a lot of them uh, in my suggestions so let me show you another chat over here and as you see i'm getting all these animated suggestions that i can use now in google messages next google play store and the first change is under the offers tab and now i started to see offers about products not only apps and games so here's an ad from aliexpress about the xiaomi pad 6 and when i scroll down i have even more products like the iphones some VR glasses and so on and so forth. The second change, when you try to install an app or game and then tap on this arrow to select a different device, you will notice here that the device selector now has its own card that slides from the bottom of the screen and instead of showing under the install button like before. And lastly, when you try to install a big app or game on cellular data, you will get a redesigned card asking you if you want to wait for Wi-Fi or continue over cellular data. Next, the safety and emergency app. On your Pixel phone, when you go to settings and then safety and emergency, scroll down a bit and you will see a new option called unknown tracker alerts. This feature was announced in the IO event, which will allow your phone to detect any unknown trackers that are traveling with you and gives you a notification. And it says here alerts are deleted after 48 hours. Currently, this feature is only working with Apple AirTags, but Google is working to include even more brands in the future. Here you have a toggle to turn the feature on or off. This is the result of the most recent scan and you can do manual scanning as well if you want by tapping on a scan now and give it its time to come up with the results. So now it's done with the scanning and it says here no trackers detected. But let me also show you what happens if your phone detected an unknown tracker. Here are some screenshots from 9 to 5 Google and you might see a notification similar to this one. It says here unknown tracker detected. The owner of the tracker can see its location and it will give you a map with the timeline to know the journey of this tracker. And there is another screen here that will give you more options. The first one is the ability to play a sound on the tracker to be able to locate it and then some instructions on what to do next. So let's go through them really quick. First, it says here changing your airplane mode, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi settings want to stop the owner from seeing its location. And then there are three suggestions. The first one, contact someone you trust or the local law enforcement. You can also hold the tracker to the back of your phone. If the owner marked it as lost, you may see more info about the tracker when you do this. And you might also need to take a screenshot of the map of tracker location because the tracker alerts are automatically deleted after 48 hours. So if you want to have an evidence, you can take a screenshot. And lastly, it will show you how you can disable the tracker, like for example, squeezing the back and removing the battery to stop it from updating your location. Next, the Google app. And the first change when you open any article and then tap on the ellipses, you will see a new option here called view page insights. When you tap on it, you will get two taps in a floating card. The first one is called Related Insights, and here it will show you articles about the same topic. And here you have about this page, which is similar to the feature we saw in Google Chrome, which will give you more information about this page specifically. You will also find two new shortcuts under the profile menu. The first one is called Dark Web Report, which is a feature we have in the Google One app, but you can access it right away from the Google app by tapping on this option. The second change here is a new shortcut for tasks. 
in a set of reminders. Previously, it was reminders, but now it will take you right away to the Google Tasks app. Next, Google Calendar. And the first change is the redesigned widgets. And for reference, here's how the same widget looks on my Pixel 7 Pro that didn't get the update. You will notice here that the arrows and the plus button switch it places. There is more white space at the top and also the plus button now has a fill color around it. Also, the calendar schedule widget got redesigned to match the month view one with the same plus button. And for reference, here is the old design on my 7 Pro, so you can see the difference side by side. And the second change is the new toggles that you will find under the calendar settings. And as you see, they look totally different when compared to the previous version. Next, Google Maps. And the first change is the new trip summary pop-up that you will see once you reach your destination. And I took a screenshot from this feature. It will show you here the duration, the distance, and the average speed. The second change is the new search button that will allow you to add stops to your route. And instead of tapping the ellipses and then add a stop, but now you can tap the search, add the stop, and you can keep using it to add even more. And that will make it slightly easier for you. Next, YouTube. And I only found one new change in this episode. Now when you activate the premium controls, you will see the seek bar at the bottom, which will allow you to quickly scrub through the video. Next, Gcam. And I only found one small tweak. If you have the Google Lens suggestions activated under settings and then point your camera towards any document, you will get a new scan document option, which is powered by Google Drive. And instead of using the older uh, photo scan feature of Google Photos, and I found this one to be much faster to scan your documents. And the last change I'm going to show you in this episode, if you are using Android 14 beta 4.1 on your Pixel phone and then start the QR code scanner, now you'll find a new option called the scan from photo, not only by using the camera. And this is a really neat feature in case someone sent you a QR code via WhatsApp or anything like that, you will be able to scan it from here. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps. And if you spotted any Anything more please let me know in the comments below or reach me out on social media to include these new features in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video